Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we finally have access to Tableau Pulse, so I'm gonna check it out. I have not looked at anything before this video. This is genuinely my first time looking at Pulse. I think this is a unique opportunity to A, understand how I look at features when they come out as new features, but more importantly, you'll kind of just see my honest first impressions of this. Normally I look at the feature ahead of time and then when I record the video, I have a bit of a hot take on it. This one is just a raw experience, so this will be a long video. I will cut snippets from this, of course, I'll post them separately, so if you wanna wait for those, do that. But yeah, we're just gonna go through right from the beginning. I have some documentation from Tableau that I'm gonna follow, but I have not prepared any Thing. I've not come to this with a data source that's cooked and ready. I haven't changed my Tableau environment at all. It was enabled earlier this week. So I'm just going to my Tableau Tim Tableau Cloud instance and we're going to start from there. Let's get stuck in. Okay, Tableau Pulse has been enabled on my site. In order to do this, you have to go and sign up for the beta. If you don't know how to do that, if you just simply go and search, let's go over here on the bottom left and search Tableau Pulse. What you should get, actually, this that's not gonna work because I need to go to google.com. I'm on a separate profile here, so everything is essentially logged out. So I don't have any sort of login to anything. It's just gonna be completely vanilla. But if you search Tableau Pulse, it's actually quite interesting what comes up. There's a bunch of sponsored links from Bistry and Tableau themselves, but Tableau Pulse's page is that third one here. So let's go ahead and accept all cookies. And this is the page you have. If you hit get started and you go down here, you sign in with your Tableau setup, you can essentially sign up for the beta. There's a little form you gotta fill in. And there, there was some hoop jumping to do. The reason I got access to this just now is because I had to jump through some hoops because I fell through some sort of cracks that legal people hadn't covered. Once I've worked with Salesforce to sort that out, I've now got access. And I think all that's happening here is just trying to make sure that you don't use the feature for something that's production ready and then go and blame Tableau for that specific uh, issue they kind of want to be able to say hey we told you not to do this it's available to test now the other thing to really emphasize and i think it's gone unnoticed is that there's a big difference between a beta and a pre-release what's the difference a pre-release in tableau's terms in the past has been a feature that is more or less ready to go out of the gate has been tested internally, but essentially they're trying to get more telemetry from everyday users to test in certain scenarios where they think there might be issues, or they just want to make sure that what they've implemented works in a more sustainable way. So often in the pre-release, you've maybe seen me cover these in videos before, you'll see them asking you to test specific things to kind of go through certain steps so you can actually test the feature properly. However, a beta is slightly different because a beta to me is essentially something that Tableau is still building. And I actually think there's an issue with the way that it's been marketed. Tableau have marketed Tableau Pulse like it's a feature that's been released. And in actual fact, this feature, Tableau Pulse itself broke the cadence of releases as well. So it, it's kind of come out away from the quarterly, now no, no longer quarterly, the triannual releases. That never sounds as good to say. It's come out in a slightly different cadence to have its own space so it can have its own marketing. And if you go to the Tableau homepage, if I literally go to tableau.com, if I go to that page, you'll see Tableau Pulse is right there on the landing page. So if you approach this from a product marketing perspective, you would be mistaken to think that this is already available and it's production ready. Yet when you go and try everything and you drill into it, it's technically, no, don't do that. We're just rolling this out. It's in beta, whatever. It's a juxtapose, right? On one hand, it's a beta. On the other hand, it's not a pre-release. And on the third hand, it's like not a launched product. So take that for what you will. I'm not going to speculate on why or what. Uh, I'm not an insider, so I don't know what's going on. But I think it's an important distinction to make uh, when looking at the product. And therefore, it's going to frame how I approach this. I'm not going to approach this like it's something that's been released officially. I'm going to approach it like something that I can feed back on and I can still influence where it goes. That's sort of the point of a beta, right? That said... I know it's pretty common in tech to leave the beta tag on things for a really long time. So I don't know how long we're going to be in beta for. So I'm just going to assume we're going to be in beta probably most of this year. That's my guess. There's only three releases this year. So it's not going to come out in 24.1, I don't think. That wouldn't make sense given they're already plugging it like it is now. So I think it maybe comes out out of beta at conference. San Diego, Salesforce, that's actually right here at the top. That's in April. That's when I think Tableau goes, this is available for everyone. Here you go. And by the way, carrot and stick, it's only available on Tableau Cloud. Yeah, we'll get to that. 
So we've covered the difference between a beta and a pre-release. We've covered a little bit about the sort of the launch cadence of this. Let's just get stuck into this and let's just do this. Let's just try Tableau Pass for the first time. What I have up is some documentation. Now I was sent this documentation as part of the community program. Essentially, I was lazy. So someone's gone and grabbed links and said, hey, look over here and look over there. And they've put together three links that I think are pretty useful. Setting up your site for Tableau Pulse, creating metrics for Tableau Pulse, and exploring metrics with Tableau Pulse. These are three meaningfully different things. You will notice that these are all peppered inside of the general Tableau help documentation. And I'm gonna say it again, Tableau Pulse, as it stands today, is only available on Tableau Cloud. And if you ask Tableau whether they're gonna make it available on Tableau Server, they all get a pretty 95% no. <laughs> and the, the reasoning for this is that they're running AI on this. And so they can do that in a reliable, scalable way on the cloud. But long story short, if you've looked at Tableau servers in the past, IT teams always try and run Tableau servers on the least resources possible. And so I think from a product experience perspective, they're just gonna argue that, look, that AI really needs to run on a platform we control, especially when they're trying to do things like train it and, and enhance it. Doesn't mean there aren't ways to do that on a server. That's just, you could create some sort of link between a Tableau server and Tableau's sort of cloud instance to do the hard work. That could be a way to go. But for now, no server support for this. If you want to try this, you're going to have to be on Tableau Cloud and watch the space. Lots of companies are going to be moving to Tableau Cloud for this. Lots of companies are already on Tableau Cloud. So again, just expect that transition to be something to expect and something that might not be as smooth as it looks. Let's go over to the homepage. I've logged into my Tableau Tim instance. I haven't logged into this in a long while. I've messed around doing silly things with this. I have no clue what state anything is in. So what I normally do is go to the Explore tab and this kind of, this is actually where I spend most of my time. I don't spend much time on the homepage, especially as a consultant, because there's nothing ever useful for me there. I'll go to the Explore tab and I quickly find what I need and I get to it, okay? Now, you'll notice Tableau Pulse sits right here on the left-hand side. So when it was enabled, this pulse section switched on now because i'm an admin on my site i think everything just got enabled as a matter of sort of stance but here's the interesting thing when we click on it let's go ahead and click on it for the first time waiting you go to a page that doesn't feel like it's part of Tableau Server. And this is the first observation. Um, and I've seen this before in demos, which is why I know, to, I know to expect this. But you can see I haven't set anything up. Um, if I look at the URL, I always like to snoop on the URL. It has a sort of interesting sub URL. So it feels like there is a separate Pulse instance that then relates to the site Tableau Tim rather than the usual sort of Tableau URL structure. And this is really pernickety stuff. Normally you just have the site, then Tableau Tim. We had Pulse, then site, then Tableau Tim. From a URL perspective, what this means to me is that they're actually running Pulse on a separate sort of bunch of machines. And when you click on Pulse, you're just being pointed to that. And that Pulse machine has access to all your data sources and all the stuff that's going on. It's it, You can't read that much more into URLs. The URLs could mean nothing. They could just be redirections. They could just be pretty fired to make things work. But I think it's meaningful because here, when you do go to Pulse, it's not like you're in the Tableau server or Tableau cloud experience, sorry. And so when I go here to search, what am I searching? Am I searching all of Tableau or am I using OmniSearch from Tableau cloud? So that's feedback number one, like coming out of that familiar experience to this new one, that sort of makes a lot of people who have to train people on how to access this, especially viewers and explorers, if you have to train them how to navigate all this, that's a little bit of like, okay, so you've, there's now two separate places to search. If I just search this, let's say sales, let's just search sales. It doesn't find anything that's on my Tableau cloud instance. So I know for a fact that's not working on Tableau. Search is now bifurcated into two separate experiences. It's not like a global Tableau cloud search, okay? So that's already um, the first thing. And again, this is <laughs> we're really being pernickety here, but this, you know, I've been using Tableau for such a long time that these are just the first things that come to mind. And also as a consultant, as someone who has to train people on Tableau, as someone who teaches, my tagline on LinkedIn is teaching the world Tableau. Like these are the questions that live in comments that people ask that just aren't straightforward. They're straightforward to you and me if you're a pro user, a heavy user, advanced user, but they're not straightforward to people who've just joined the platform. 
let's immerse ourselves a little bit. Let's stop, talk, stop talking and let's go full screen a bit. We'll put the documentation away for a bit. Let's just see what we find. You're about to use Tableau AI. Generative AI can produce inaccurate or harmful responses. Uh, review output for accuracy and safety. You assume responsibility for how the outcomes of Tableau AI are applied to your organization. So I think that's a fair statement to come out with. It's not a great endorsement. We're in the space of analytics. So inaccuracy and harmful responses in the space of analytics is a very sort of interesting thing. And I think AI has generally lowers, lowered people's tolerance for inaccuracy, if that makes sense. Inaccuracy is suddenly more plausible because the upside of it is just incredible if you get what you need out of it. So I'm not sure where I sit on the fence with that. I think I'm probably on the side of I'd rather these things were more accurate and they were dialed back to be more accurate and maybe didn't get as much value because that then encourages confidence and trust and it kind of builds momentum into the tools. Whereas if you if you get something that's inaccurate or harmful, that's a bad first experience and therefore it leads to, especially with data, it leads to lack of confidence in what you're actually seeing. So let's hit got it. Let's go back to the very first page I landed on, which was the following page. Immediately we've got okay, the following page in the browse metrics. I have neither. Those are the first two things I could do. On the right hand side, I have this option to set up a new metric definition. And if I go view all metrics, you'll see I have nothing again. So out of the gate, a little bit frustrating. Let me explain why. If I go back to, actually, this is a really good question. How do I go back to my Tableau Cloud instance? Can I go back to my Tableau Cloud instance? I cannot go to back to my Tableau Cloud instance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. To, to me, that's just fundamental stuff, right? So let's let's go to online.tableau. That one. That's the one we want. So when you go to Pulse, let's just click that. In my opinion, it keeps you in the same browser tab. In my opinion, if it's not gonna give me a way of going back to the page I was just on, that is a pretty jarring experience. If the only way I can go is back to get to that, once I'm three or four clicks in, then <laughs> this is taking people out of the sort of cloud experience. So that's a small, again, these are small details. I'm just discovering things as I go, but nonetheless, um, that to me is pretty, if I went to, let's just do this. Let's go to the explore tab. Let's go to top level. And let's say I want to look at, let's look at what am I going to use here? Oh, all the metrics have disappeared. So I can't create, oh, that's it. That is really annoying. Ah, all my metrics have gone because, of course, they're no longer supported now that Pulse is out. Uh, Ask Data and Pulse are just... Oh, man. Oh, that's not even a big deal, but come on. Really? Oh. I'm just going to check. I can't create the metrics. The reason... I'll tell you why that really... <laughs> I'll tell you why this really pissed me off in a second. Hold on. If I uh, watch subscriptions and alerts, I am really clutching at straws here, aren't I? Yeah, we're not going to be able to do this stuff, are we? It used to be here. Yep. The reason I'm annoyed about that is I lost something. I lost something without even, I hadn't logged in, let's say a month. To be honest, I actually had logged in within a month because I, I checked it last week to see if I had access or not. But this has thrown me because what I was hoping is that I could use the old metrics to convert them into something in Tableau Pulse because those metrics were already based on a chart. They were tracking something. So I was hoping I could just use one of those things to get what I needed out of this, but no. So I need to leave this there. Okay, so we're gonna leave this data sources here. So let's do this. Let's go to our data sources. Let's see what we have. Let's go to list view and let's sort this by the number of workbooks, uh, number of views, sales commission. Okay, cool. Prepping the browser, top salesperson. So some of these are pretty good data sources. I think if I go to top salesperson, this is I think a pretty, uh, straightforward one so it comes from the flow we've only got a few oh, it's only got a few items in there so that's not so great 
I've got a virtual connection that connects to my Snowflake instance. That could be a good one to uh, set up, but I don't want that. Let's go back. This is a bit of a, I hate to say it, I'm gonna have to use Superstore. I'm gonna have to use Superstore, and then what I'm probably gonna do is over the next week, I'm gonna set up some really good sort of data sources, maybe go into my YouTube a YouTube channel metrics from Snowflake, because I have them in there. And I think that will make for a more interesting way of testing Pulse in real time as things change. So, this is weird. So I have to open, uh, I'm really stuck, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Let's go out to the, the, the instructions and say, okay, see, see what it says. Set up your site for Tableau Pass. See if this gives me guidance on what to do first. Create metrics, Tableau Pass for information, have viewers interact with metrics, see, explore with metrics. Okay, cool. Set up your site, verify that you publish data source, connect your site with Slack, turn on Tableau AI, turn on Tableau AI. Let's go have a look at that and see what that is about. Tablet AI. Tablet uses Tablet AI, which is blah, 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 blah. Tablet AI is used to generate. Tablet Post doesn't use the site's data to train Tablet AI. As Tablet AI, Jesus, how many times? Tablet AI. That's a lot of Tablet AI on one page. Okay. Turn on Tablet if you want users to see personalized information. Turn on Tablet AI. Okay. Takes you further down the page. From the main Tablet cloud, go to settings. Under availability of Tablet AI, select Enable Tableau Pulse Insight Summaries to use Generative AI to summarize key. Select Save. So Settings. And so here we are. We go to our site, which is not in Tableau Pulse. If I'd gone to Tableau Pulse, you'd think you'd go here to do this. And you go to Preferences and, oh, it'll be here. It's just completely different. Yeah. Oh, God. Is there anything in here? No. Can I find it? No. Okay. So we're in Settings. I think I'm going to have to scroll down here. So this is my content. I'm in settings. Am I in the right place though? No, I need to go to settings over here. Sorry. I went to my personal settings on the top right hand side. What I actually need to do is go to the site settings and in here, can I search for Tableau AI? It's not there. Okay. Ah, data driven alerts, tagging. Uh, flow parameters, run now, link tasks, flow subscriptions, personal spaces, view acceleration. Huh. Am I missing something? Under select settings, under availability of Tableau AI, from the main Tableau Cloud navigation menu, select settings, under availability of Tableau AI. Okay, what am I missing here? Where am I seeing? Where should it go? Come on. Availability of data stories. Okay, on. Availability of explained data. On. Availability of data guide. On. Availability of external actions. Enabled. Can't find it. Is it not on here? Okay. Let's see if I can see this. Availability of Tableau AI is not there. Okay. Let's just go back. There's four mentions of availability of, and those are the four. They're all on. I'm not having a dyslexic moment, am I? Nope. Let's go to some of these other ones. Slack is on. It's connected to my TN Media Slack. That's fine. Connected apps, mobile's not really got anything here. Um, Extensions, nope. Integrations don't make sense, nope. Extensions, nope. Bridge, nope, wouldn't be here. Um, need to do some new videos on Bridge. Authentication in general. So, yeah, someone from Tableau is watching. This is the version I'm on, 24.1. <laughs> Doesn't have the setting uh, that's in the documentation. So let me close this tab so I don't get confused. Yeah. I just have to assume it's on. I have to assume it's on. I can't go to settings. So it's not a good start, but hey, set up your site. Okay, permission for metrics. There are no permissions for you to use Tableau to set and power Tableau Pass. Users access Tableau Pass from Tableau Cloud Navigation Menu, but the metrics in Tableau Pass aren't part of the project content hierarchy in Tableau Cloud. Whoa. Oh my God. Okay. All governed by project-based permissions. That is it. Oh, geez. That's a big change. 
The ability to create or see metrics is based on permission to connect to and access data in a data source. The data users see when viewing a metric respects row level security applied to the data source. Okay, let me decipher this. So what this is saying is that Tableau Pulse or Tableau pulses, well, I don't know what the pros of, a pulse metric, let's say that, isn't part of the project content hierarchy. Instead, it observes the permissions on the data source. I think this is what it's saying. The ability to create or see metrics is based on permission to connect to and access data in a data source. So that's what you have to go to to kind of get this to work, okay? The data users see when viewing a metric respects row level security applied to the data source. Metrics also respects row level security. We should probably do a video on row level security. That's fun. Permissions for creating metric definitions. Any user with a site role of creator, site admin explorer or explorer can publish, <laughs> can create metric definitions in Tableau Pulse. To create a metric, so you can't create a Pulse metric definition as a viewer, but anyone who's an explorer can publish, admin explorer or creator, can do so. To create a metric definition from a published data source, the user must have the connect permission capability for the data source. Okay, so Pulse is linked to the existing permissions hierarchy, but it's not directly linked. I get why. I kind of wonder if Tableau is trying to break away from the project hierarchy by putting Pulse elsewhere because they don't want Pulses to live inside of folders that people never see and therefore they never see the metric. Instead, they've taken it out and they want the interface to push things to you and you just to have a feed, a wall of metrics and they'll show you what's important. I get that. I get that sort of philosophical push. But if it's not part of the permissions setup, then how do you see how do you troubleshoot these past metrics? I think we have to create one to understand. Let me put a note. I have this wonderful like blank canvas on the left-hand side, right on the right-hand side where I'm taking notes. I'm typing them all in. So the first thing I want to do is check permissions. What's that? Check permissions visibility once metric created. So does the metric give me a way of seeing who I can and can't share it with? And can I see the perceived permissions as you can do inside of the project hierarchy on a pulse metric. That's essentially what I'm asking. Permissions for viewing metrics. Okay, the ability to see data for a metric depends on the access to the data. Okay, Tableau AI and pulse, Tableau on AI, turn on Tableau AI, this didn't work. Troubleshoot metrics, so that's the end. So let's look at the viewing metrics permission. This is the last thing I'll read in detail, and then we'll move on. The ability to see the data for a metric depends on access to data in the data source that the metric is connected to. Tableau Pulse doesn't prompt users to sign in to see the data. Instead, one of the following must be true for the users to see the metric. The credentials of the data source are embedded, fine. The user's credentials are passed to the data source with single sign-on. The user's credentials are saved for the data source. The data source doesn't require the user to authenticate to access data. That is, that sounds different. Please, Tableau Pulse doesn't prompt users to sign in to see the data. What? What if, okay. I don't know why I don't understand the significance of this. I think, I guess I'm just confused about this. Tableau Pulse doesn't prompt users to sign in to see data. If you go into Tableau Pulse from the navigation pane, you'd already be logged in. It does just use the credential from the data source, whether it's published or not. So I guess this is, it's talking about the database credentials, like the data source credentials, rather than like the credentials of the Tableau instance. So maybe that would be something specific to add to this. So let's just read this again and add that in to see if it works. The ability to see the data for metric depends on access to the data in the data source that the metric is connected to access to the data in the data source. Tableau Pulse doesn't prompt users to sign in to see the data. Instead, one of the following must be true for the user to see the metric data. The credentials for the data source are embedded. So if you're connected to SQL Server, the credentials for that are embedded in the data source, so therefore the user doesn't need to be prompted to see that. The user's credentials are passed to the data source with single sign-on. I'm logged into Tableau Server, signed on with my Windows ID, when I go to see the metric, it passes my Windows credentials to that data source. That is, source. yes, this is Tim, it goes through. The user's credentials are saved for the data source. For more information, saved for the data source. Uh, saved credentials for data source connections. Okay, 
So these, ah, uh, there is somewhere here. If I go to my account settings, here we go. I think when you log into certain data sources, so these are the saved credentials it's talking about. If you log into any one of these, a saved credential would appear in here. So you can see here, I'm logged into my TN Media Salesforce instance, and you can see that's a saved credential. So this is what it's talking about there. I'm glad I figured that out. The data source doesn't require the user to authenticate to access the data. So a Google Sheet or um, something like that's public and therefore doesn't have a credential, therefore you just go in and connect to it. Okay. So in terms of setting up your site for Tableau Pulse, that's pretty much everything. We found out about the data source. We found out about permissions. That's good. Okay. Create metrics with Tableau Pulse. This is the next step. <laughs> so Tableau Pulse provides insights, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Show me the money. Metrics and definitions. Oh, hello. There's a little bit of hierarchy here. So behind every metric in Tableau Pulse is a metric definition. Viewers interact with metrics. Metric definitions specify the core metadata for these metrics. That makes sense. So you've got measure, time dimension, blah, 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 blah. That creates this metric and that metric. Okay, cool. Makes sense. That's a really good definition. In fact, I always think of metrics in this way when I'm building uh, dashboards. It's just that it's nice to see it here and it's actually the way they thought about it in the product. So pretty cool. So you have definition field, metric name, measure and aggregation. Okay. So it looks like these are the context of a metric, if that makes sense. And they set the tone of what Pulse is going to show you. So these are the things. These are, in this case, are the variables that would go into that or example values. And then that basically gives you what you need. Now, that's the metric definition. Metric. Let's see what the metric is. The in interactive objects that sit in front of a definition Created when users adjust filters or time context options, which means that there, are, there can be many metrics related to a definition. So let me get this straight. So a metric definition is just saying, hey, I want this number over this period of time from this data source done, okay? A metric is specifically you then dialing those in, right? So a metric definition is broad. A metric is precise, if that makes sense. So users follow and explore metrics to get insights. The following tables provide an example of the options configured for related metrics. These options are applied on top of the core value that is specified by the metric definition. Okay, so related metric for Supertool sales technology. You have the quarter compared to previous year, specifically technology. Another metric is year to date, compared to previous year for office supplies. Same definition, different metrics. Okay, clear. What makes Tableau Pulse different? Oh, that's a bold paragraph. Let's just see if there's anything juicy up here first before we get stuck into that. When you create the definition, Tableau automatically creates an initial blah, 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 blah. People in your organization follow metrics. Blah, 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 blah. I'm skim reading here. That's why I'm going blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let you manage the data. Okay, see that you remember yourselves. Okay, these are just further examples to digging in. Okay, what makes Tableau Pulse different? Presents a simplified flow to create metro definitions that with only a few selections, you can make a definition that would normally require complex calculations. Okay, cool. I get that. Data source requirement for metric definition. It's a single published data source. This can be extract or live connection. You can't connect to a data source that is embedded in a workbook and you can't connect to multiple data sources or use data blending unless you combine the data before publishing the data source. Okay, so you can't use blended outputs. You have the connect permission capability of data source. Of course, the data source contains a measure, basically contains enough stuff for it to work with for a metric. So the key thing here it has to be a single published data source and it can be an extract or a live connection. You, or like, like, why is that there? I always wonder, like, why is that there? Yeah, it's it just, yeah. You can't connect. It's, it's in between two things. That, it's sandwiched between two things, which means you might miss it. You can't connect to a data source that is, so it can't be a virtual connection, maybe what this is saying. Is this just saying it can't be a virtual connection? This can be an extract or a live connection. I, I wish it just says it can't be a virtual connection. I'm, I, I think that's what it's saying. Who knows? Creating a metric definition. Oh, we've got a two minute video. Um, I could watch this or I could just give it a go. So let's give it a go. Let's stop being, let's stop messing around. Let's go to new metric definition. Okay, so here we go. When I do that, I can obviously search. This is pretty nice. If I was to search Superstore, 
It's not, oh yeah, it is updating as I type, so that's quite good. And it's just an Excel file. Let's just go ahead and create this. I think my face is over the button. So let's go ahead and connect to that. And then here we go. We have the interface. It loads up the interface, which is kind of good. So you remember we've got the definition and then we've got the metrics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna track sales, okay? Sales metric measure is going to be sales. I can go ahead and type that. So pretty cool. The aggregation is going to be sum. Okay. So I should really go up here and say total. That would be nice if when you chose an aggregation, it changed the title as a suggestion. So that, that would be quite good. Cause you say sum, you kind of want to make sure there's a little confusion and pos potentially as you choose things here, this description gets auto populated with tags, right? That would be quite nice. Anyway, show sparkline values to date as non-cumulative or running total. That's quite good. If you want it to show you year year versus budget or something like that, that's quite a nice way to have running total just show you how close you are to achieving that. Non-cumulative uh, time dimension is going to be the order date. You could do it by shipping date. That would be weird. And so that's a basic definition. So can't compare data when the value is null. Okay, so month to date is breaking this because of course there is no sales in this year and I'm using Superstore sales. And so the month to date is going to be pretty grim. Oops, sorry, clicked on my face. So yeah, unless you're using live data sources, this is gonna be not so great because you'll look at it and you'll think it's not working. It is actually working. I just don't have anything in this year inside of Superstore. We'll figure that out some other way. If I say create advanced metric, what I should have done is I've changed the order date, like order date plus whatever. So can I do that? Can I create, cal oh yeah, I can. Oh, wow, okay, order date. Let's do this. Let's see if we can solve this and say date add. I'm gonna say, if I just highlight this, I'm gonna double click that and it's gonna, that's the date, okay. Gramly, move out the way. Thank you. No, come on, move out the way. There you go over there. Date add year. We're gonna say three years. And then we just say order date, boom. Okay. I'm gonna say order date plus three. Hit apply. Okay. So this is cool. I have the calculation window that I can get in, but it's kind of crazy. I'm already in here to kind of solve the problem. Yeah, where does this calculation live inside of the published data source or yeah, it'd be interesting to kind of go to the published data source and see if it's created that in there. The measured time dimension filters you add will replace those fields in the metric definition. No other fields from this editor will be saved. The measure time dimension and filters you add will replace those fields in the metric definition. I have no idea what that means. But yeah, let's just keep going. We'll probably figure it out. Apply your selection. Before you apply your selections, make sure that you've added one measure, one time dimension, any number of filters. Oh, so I need to add my time dimension there. You can see it's not actually caught up with us. So let's say, let's add, ah, this is very, yeah, let's, let's see this. There you go. That, let's say six, just so we have, we're in 2024, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Just one time dimension will do. Apply, apply. Can't apply selections from the advanced analytics selector. <sighs> Why? Oh, do I need to do this? Do I, okay, I need to do that. Fine. So interestingly here, you have to build you have to build this into this sort of pane. So let's go ahead, apply. This is probably why it would have helped to read the instructions. There you go, that's what's worked. And <laughs> we can see that what we have done is we've gone and defined our order date. In that place, we had a filter, a measure, and a time dimension, it's essentially the three things it needs. And we've gone and done it in the pane there, and then it's just saved those and brought it out. I think it saved them as part of the data source in Pulse, but not actually in the actual thing. And so we've set an advanced metric definition. Now, the cool thing about that is you could go and write the calculation for that and drop it in and you'd be pretty much good to go. So that's quite nice. And now we have some data in here. Oops. Now we have some data in here that we can actually play with. So that's quite good. Okay. 
adjustable metric for filters. So we can say country, we can say, oh, so here you're choosing what you can filter by. So you can say category, we can say subcategory as a, as a simple example. So here you're adding your uh, filters. We'll add a shipping one. How many of these can we add? Let's add manufacturer and let's go customer name. Okay, so let's give our, our users a ton of metric definitions. Okay, number format. We can say this is a currency value. Okay, and as we do that, it kind of processes everything. Now, I don't know what currency is going to use. It's going to use dollars. I don't know how to change that. I don't know what that's based on. Maybe it's in the data source. It is the American data source save. That's fine. So let's save the definition. And here we go. Let's put our face over here. So we have a metric. So this is our first metric. Okay. So if I go back, oh, no, it wants to go to the data source page. But if I go to browse metrics, you can see we have one there, total sales. And can I, if I go to the metric, I can actually follow it. So total sales, I have this related metrics one month to date, right? So the metric definition is what's sitting at the top here, remember? And then the specific metric is what's sitting here. So if I follow that, that is great. Now, that definition is always going to be those three things. Great, yeah. And everything else is just going to be likes contextual. So that's pretty cool. So it's an interesting one because for example, if I hit adjust and I say year to date, okay, it's going to go off and think about it. And I had to hit apply there. And these sort of little cubes at the top are giving us that sort of context. This one gives us a slightly different chart, I think, because I think we're in January. We've not really taken off yet. But if I look at this and we look at by ship mode or let's look at this by a subcategory, let's say, that's quite good. We can kind of see what's popping and what's not. And as we scroll down, you're starting to get insights. So this is wow, this is this has got complex real quick. So this reminds me of Alteryx Auto Insights a lot. Some of this, the way, some of the orchestration and the order in which it's happening. Maybe there's some inspiration there, but okay. And so you've got Tableau AI giving you these questions here. That's what these are. And then you've got insights, top insight about this change, which manufacturer increased the most, GBC, okay. It's a shame that none of this is interactive. I'd love to click on GBC and have the story get a bit more interesting. But if I follow this one, you'll see it's year to date compared to previous period, right? Now, if I adjust this and I go, just show it to me for tech. Oh, I can exclude tech. That's great. I have that, I have that sort of tableau include exclude terminology and hit apply. I keep wanting to hit an apply page somewhere else. Yeah. And then if I go back to the breakdown, this is just tech now hit follow. Okay. Now, if I go to my pulse, you can see I created one definition, but I now have three metrics from that one definition and they're tracking slightly different things. One is year to day technology, another is year to day for everything. And another one is month to date for everything. So this is actually quite powerful. And immediately we're starting to get tableaus giving us some hints at the top and you can start to give it some sort of context. Now, what is interesting is it's done this incredibly quickly. I don't know if it's trained on Superstore already. So it's just like, I've seen this data source before. <laughs> Come on, let me just help you out here and just give this to you straight away. I'd love to know what this is like on people's own data sources and how fast that is. Cause it was last updated five seconds ago. I don't know if that's just to keep up. And actually from a product perspective, I imagine as soon as you set up Pulse, it's going to prioritize new Pulse instances, like right to the top of that analysis. Cause as soon as you're using the product, you want to have that first good impression, right? And then subsequent updates are probably going to be more difficult to trigger, probably based on data refreshes and stuff like that. But really nice that you got this out of the gate. It's super cool. So first impressions. I like this. I like this a lot. And let me tell you why. If I go to this page here and I go to, let's say, one of these, okay? So often in everyday analytics, users want to change what's in front of them. And they have to go to the dashboard developer to do one of two things, add a ton of filters or change the way the report works. Now, these are basic reports, but actually for 80% of use cases, 
This is great. This is fine. Now, the second thing is that some of what's in here is actually just aesthetically easier and nicer to do. That that sort of terminology we got with include and exclude, the fact that this is all running on the web, this is definitely not rendering a, a Tableau Viz in the background. <laughs> this would be far slower. If we look at this, the speed of this, right, and, and the way it cuts through, like this is definitely not running off VizQL, right? So let's just get that clear now. And yeah, it's easy for the users to come in and adjust this. As long as these broad brush uh, filters have been added to the metric definition, someone can come in and just change what they want to see. So someone maybe who cares about same day orders and wants to only track a specific manufacturer for a specific customer in a specific country, this is great. So if I, yeah, if I just go back and I say technology specifically, interesting that when I've selected technology, this list, oh, that's interesting. This list has not self-filtered itself. So I can, let's see if it will let me do this. Let's say I select the binders, okay? And I hit enter. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. I mean, that that is just, that is, that's, that's not good. Um, so I can't take a screenshot because I'm actually recording the video. <laughs> I tried to take a screenshot there. So let me put that down. Um, shouldn't be able to create uh, metrics that can't happen. So the reason this is a metric that can't happen is because if I adjust this, the category is tech, but the subcategory is not actually from tech. So there doesn't seem to be any sort of smart linking between all of this. So it's possible for me as a user, a lay user, to create a metric that can't work. And that's hard to know and understand because you can't see the data source in the background and you'll just generate noise. And this is for the majority of users. So you could very quickly get a ton of requests and support requests for things that are just 10% of the time just can't be done because that's not how the data source is set up. So that is, that's an interesting one. I've seen that's a small one that Tableau can fix very easily. This is inside of Tableau itself, Tableau Desktop and even Tableau Prep. This is native. So for that not to be here, kind of interesting. But yeah, all of these selections should update. For example, here it just has United States. Instead of saying all, it should just say United States because there's no other country it could possibly be, if that makes sense. Here, when I select technology, subcategory should only show me the, sub, the subcategories that matter. Okay, ship mode, uh, as you drill down into whatever your selection is, these should just lock themselves into this, the lowest state if that's the only state available. But let's go ahead, um, select values to include, I'll select subcategory, so let's say select all. I'll just select all just to keep things simple, okay? And we'll go ahead and follow, and that's nice. Now, when we click on followers, you can add multiple people, so you can search for people in groups. I'm assuming, let's search for, blah, 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 blah. let's search for, <laughs> there's only a few of us on this server, so there's no point setting up groups, so I won't do that at all. But nonetheless, yeah, it's fine. We'll just leave this as is. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Interesting. Interesting first impressions. Interesting first impressions. I've not yet, oh, I've not yet experienced this coming to my phone. I think I'll do that in another video. I'll go through and we'll kind of, dig through that in a little bit more detail. But as a first pass, this is interesting. Now, this also feels to me like a genuine experience, right? I created a null, I created two that don't look great, and I created one that should work, but it's got gaps in it. And the kind of thing you'll see people start to fight with is, oh, why has that got gaps? What's going on that? Oh, because you didn't have any cells in Jan. Oh, you didn't have cells in those periods. Okay, cool. So what people expect is you for you to draw a line, but that then you get into this, the cells weren't flat in that period. There were just zero cells. So really the line should go down to zero and then come back up, okay? So you could do it this way and you can kind of play around with that, but that's fine. Now, what I haven't done is, Ask subsequent questions. So let's try that. Which manufacturer had very high total sales? So you ask which manufacturer had total sales. So this is what it gave you. Okay, which subcategory decreased in cost? Oh, so what it's doing is as you click on these, it's, let's just go crazy and just like, when will it stop? What it's doing is it's adding them to the list. 
Man, this is hey, we run out <laughs> we run out of all the questions. So what is interesting is every time I was clicking, it was adding to the list. And I just thought, hell, let's just click this until it runs out of stuff to tell us. So let's see the quality of everything it gave us. So bottom contributors by manufacturer are poly. So basically, go get rid of these people. Which customer name had low total sales? Okay. So there's the average of 32 others is a lot higher. These are a lot smaller. So that's kind of interesting because if you're looking at customers, it's just being able to just bring that out. It's just, yeah. Which ship mode increased the most? Second class, average for three. Others went down, second class went up. These are great insights. Compared to the last month, total sales decreased by 4%. Andy, blah, 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 increased in total sales. Okay, so basically the average for 139 others was down, but these customers, their spending was up. Okay. Interesting. You asked which subcategory had low total sales. Average of 11 others is this, and these ones were well below that. Nice. And compared to the last month, total sales. The amount of questions it's answered faster than I could build a dashboard, again, just speaks to the fact that, man, analytics is changing. If this stuff can be correct and accurate, then this is great. Now, what I haven't done is gone and opened up a dashboard and then gone and checked all of this. Because again, here's the thing with AI, the pace at which it gives you answers is impossible to keep up with from a single developer perspective. Maybe that's one thing I should do. I should do a video where I just go and fact check Tableau files and see how right or wrong some of these responses were. On face value, these are good insights that it's pulling out. The kind of insights that a lot of people struggle to ask or even just think to ask. It's great that it's just pulling them out. It's giving people suggestions of where to go and where to look. And the great thing is these are disposable. You can look at them and say, ah, no, that's not important. Oh, this is important. Wow, this guy's down like by by nine grand whoa what's going on there let's go give him a call there are lots of little hints and tips in this i really love it i really love it i, I think it's great and it's very easy to use um so if i then go up here and i search sales again now you can see that it gets a little bit more lively because i'm now searching based on the five or six metrics that i've created so if i go to this category you'll see this is the one that's uh, bland but hey if i go back it takes me back to this. Okay, so here we are. So yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. As a first experience, just setting this up, getting used to it, understanding how it works, very good. Let's go ahead and create one more metric definition. Let's just, let's see. Yeah, let's use this one. Okay, let's hit the connect. Okay, so let's say this one is going to be, let's, what value should we go for here? Let's go for profit. So go profit is the definition, profit, and then we'll do sum, we'll do running total. It's interesting. Yeah, let's do running total, fine. Time dimension, order date. Running total will give us a nice line chart, okay? Time dimension, oh, damn it, order date. I need to go do that thing again. <sighs> That's so annoying. <laughs> so, this is my data source, this is not Tableau, but Ah, still annoying. Create calculated field. Uh, this rate, I just need faster typing it. Date, add year, comma, six, comma, order date. And get rid of that. Date, apply, okay. Bring that in, time dimension, measure, profit, ooh. Can I bring in two metrics? No, you can only bring them one at a time. Fine. That's our metric. Nice. This is almost the same sort of backend as creating a metric previously. So here we go. We'll let it go. Okay. Now I said running totals. Oh, uh, okay. So in here, do I? Yes. That's a subtle thing. If you want to make it running total here, you have to know where the running total option is. So you'll go in here, create running total, and now can't apply a selection from advanced analytics at a bad request, four or five bad requests. Well, what was that about? One measure, one time dimension. Ah, uh, okay. It doesn't like running totals. That makes no sense. Here we go. Let's do it by month. And then let's try again with profit. 
And then all I wanted to do was a running total. What's wrong with that? Okay, hit apply. Apply again. Huh, doesn't like that. Okay. Maybe that's a bug. Yeah, it doesn't like running titles by the looks of things. Running titles, not working. Okay, so the calculation name's kind of weirded out. I called it date and it's come back with the calculation name. That's not cool, but hey, anyway, that's fine. We won't select anything. We'll give it currency again, and then we'll call it a day and save the definition. Select the field. Oh, select filters. Sorry, I forgot to add these. So let's be a little bit more selective this time. Let's look at region and let's look at customer. Category, region, and customer, yeah? Those are like the three most common sort of region definition things you'd get. So here we go, okay. Nice, so let's just go follow this metric out the gate. Now if I go to Tableau Pulse, we have several metrics. If I go browse the metrics, we have two definitions Oops, with five, six related metrics altogether. Okay, so this is the, the the setup. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The feature in a nutshell. There's a lot more to this, obviously. And I've taken my time, spent the full hour going into it. And I think I'm starting to get who this is for. Primarily, it's for viewers and explorers who are mostly consuming data. It's for those people that want to take a little bit more control of um, these particular things. Now, by extension, I think viewers should be able to create these because it is actually easy enough that I think viewers would be able to understand this. But it's going to be explorers who can publish, explorers who are site creators, and then creators who build these. Okay. So you're gonna need those licenses in order for this to work. And I think it's carrot and stick to kind of not let you buy viewers and therefore not pay for Pulse and try and shift the body of people up from viewer into Explorer. Essentially, if you can in increase the Explorer body count, you can increase revenue because you've just essentially upsold a few viewers. So maybe that's the mechanic in here. I'm speculating. I don't know if that's the case. If you know that's the case, let me know in the comments below. But yes, I think that's what's going on here. My overall thoughts, it's incredible. Tableau Salesforce has moved heaven and earth to get this feature out in such little time. It's responded, it's gone hell for leather, it's pulled resources, it's pushed certain things out the way, it's pulled a team together, it's got all the stuff out, it's gone big with the marketing. It's, if you've ever wanted to see Tableau or Salesforce in this specific case looking at Tableau, make something happen. This is the perfect example to show you that. And they've done it to a really high standard. The interface is well polished. Yes, there's bugs, it's a beta. They're gonna improve those things. And yes, there's things that could be better. Yes, it's not part of the native Tableau Cloud instance and you have to kind of hop around. Yes, it's maybe gonna be landlocked behind Explorer licenses, but no doubt this is an incredible push. If you're a Power BI user and you're like, oh, Power BI, I've had this forever. Yes, okay, great. If you look at car industries, they're features that start off in some cars and then they're in every car and no one cares. It's just the way it is. Analytics has become a commodity space. So features will make their way across multiple products. The difference though is how does the feature work and how well is it integrated with everything else? Okay, that actually brings me to this point. This feels like an extremely high level of polish but I wonder how much of the rest of the platform is going to get in the way of this experience. So we've not looked at the capability of building data sources for this yet. There are a few tweaks and a few assumptions in there. There are a few restrictions. Ultimately, you're going to need to build good published data sources to make this work. You'll probably want to do that in desktop because in desktop, you can build data models that work in a sort of very designed way. And we kind of saw the data model working inside of the advanced window that we created, right? We can actually go in there and pull those metrics in and write those calculations. Now, what was interesting as I wrote those calculations and you pull the stuff in, you did get a chart to show you what was going on. And so that's actually quite important because you need to be able to see what you're doing. And then when you save those, it goes off and takes a snapshot of that and turns it into a metric. And then those metrics are split into two domains, a definition and then the underlying metrics related to that definition. The flip side to that is if Tableau can do this in nine months, 
there's stuff that's been on the table for years that I just haven't touched. And so that's, this sort of shows your hand that you're, you're listening. You just don't think those things are important. And desktop got the same level of love in terms of chart design and polish and enhancement as this. That's a signal to people, right? And yes, look, new chart types are coming soon to Tableau Desktop and all of that stuff. AI is coming to create a focus features. Tableau Copilot is a good example. So those things have to come and they have to come quickly to really sit alongside this and for people to see the platform move on. But you know what? Like, I think it was a really soft, smooth experience. I think there's lots of areas of improvement like improvement it'd be nice to see more chart types than just line charts i think it's just because of what i built but i'd love to see these sort of domains broaden out <laughs> gauges there i say <laughs> someone's gonna ask for a gauge 100 percent progress bars we need some of those charts that fill this sort of card if you can get it on a playing card it should be on here right these are really nice cards and these aren't new. I mean, if I just do something and I just go to uh, uh, Dribble is like a creative site, right? And if I just search analytics cards, let's say, and we see, yeah, you, you get, <laughs> don't have to go far to find really good examples. So you get obviously line charts, you get here pie chart, that's a good one. You've got the line chart there, bar charts, all of these actually, these are like great little hints and tips of where the product could go. Let's search chart types in here. Someone would have done a nice good graphic with lots of different chart types. Yeah, these, like some of these are far out. They definitely don't necessarily belong in analytics, strictly speaking, because they're a bit like aesthetic over charts. But let's take this, right? So Rafael, Rafael Baran, he doesn't know that I'm sitting on his website right now, but look at this. You've got lists, that could be a card type. You've got line charts, we've already got that. We've got bar charts over time, that could be a chart type. Percentage progress bars as a pie chart, that could be a chart type. All of these could be wonderful chart types. And I think that's the real potential with Pulse. You've got a, an avenue to go in a really interesting way with these charts with things that people haven't seen before, but have always wanted. And you can do them quickly and easily because you're in the web interface. You're no longer limited by VizQL. So that to me is the opportunity. That is where I see things being kind of, kind of getting really exciting. And I think it's it would be fantastic if Tableau came out of the gate and prioritized those things. The things that people ask for, they're really difficult in desktop, that developers waste a ton of time building, no offense, but yeah, everyone wants them. If I look at this, a <laughs> competitor analysis, imagine building this as a metric, right? This would be fantastic. Just give people an interface to build exactly this and they can see this changing. Wowzers. That would just be a game changer. And I know, I know I'm wish casting here, but to me, this is a creativity that Tableau platform is really good at. It's a creativity in Tableau public. You should be going to Tableau public, grabbing the most viewed chart types and visualizations and using those to drive how you build these awesome things in Tableau Pulse. Like really bring all that creativity into the platform and make Pulse do something that is just hard to do if you're trying to do it manually because that will draw people in and it'll just make people enjoy defining metrics rather than having to build metrics and that's like a step change in the way people think about that focusing people on the definition which means the building is done for you and therefore all the ai and all the automation whatever can happen on top of that fantastic i realized my video froze i just see myself like completely static <laughs> So I stopped the video, I'm going to come back. So sorry, I froze for a minute there. It is what it is. But yeah, what I was saying is bring all that creativity into the platform and I think it'll be fantastic. But there we have it. That's Tableau Pulse. This is my first gambit. This was not some sort of video of how to do this, how it works. I will have to build some more interesting metrics here and I think it'll be really fun to kind of get that done. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.